Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hack the Google Chrome Dinosaur game so that you not only can jump as high as you want, run as fast as you want, but most importantly, get the high score, the max score possible. And this is going to be modifying the game code, the underlying code that makes the game work. Don't worry if you don't have any programming experience. I'll try to explain everything each step along the way. So let's go ahead and get on into it. Uh, real quick, I'm just going to play the game and show you what this is. So T-Rex, the whole point is to jump over these obstacles. And because I am playing this game during the Olympics, there's these blue torches that change the environment of the game based on, I guess, uh, the theme that they choose. So I, I did see the, the surfing one. Uh, there's also a track and field one. But that is pretty much beside the point because the point of this video is to hack the game, make him jump higher, run faster, and get a max score possible. So how do we do that? Let's access the game code. We can do that by going to these three dots in the upper right hand corner and go to more tools and developer tools. And I'm just gonna refresh the page here. Make sure the, the order that you do these steps in is important. So make sure you're on the elements tab to begin with. Um, I'm gonna refresh the page. And then I'm going to start playing the game. And then what we're going to do is click on the sources tab uh, once the game starts. So let's play the game. I'm going to click over to sources. And you'll see there's a pause button here. The game's paused right now, but from the code perspective, the game is not paused. So let's pause the script, script execution and then come back over here to the game. And what that's going to do is pull up the code. This is really cool. So this file contains pretty much all the logic for the game and it is just about 4,000 lines of code. It's 3,998 lines of code. Now I'm not going to say that I understand every single line of code in here, but I do understand how to interact with it. Okay. So, so basically I, I spent a lot of time in here poking around and what I found, I'm going to hit control F for find and that's going to bring up this finder window here. What I found is there's a series of config variables, okay? And that's just basically, uh, this is JavaScript code. These are basically just dictionary key value pairs. So there's a config element that starts here on line 141 and ends here on line 171. And they have these series of uh, configuration values. So acceleration is set to 0.001. Uh, what else is something cool? The gravity is set to 0 0.06. I think we'll look at that. The speed is six. So we can potentially modify those values. Let's see what other config variables there are. There's one for T-Rex config, okay? So he has also gravity, he has height, he has max jump height, um, all this stuff. So what else? We got distance meter config. I believe that's this guy up here, the distance meter. Cloud config, background, EL config night mode config, horizon config. So what we're gonna do right off the bat is to interact with some of these configs. I'm gonna show you how to modify some of the values. So because we are in night mode right now, let's modify one of these values. Night mode config has fade speed, height, moon speed, number of stars, star size, star speed. Let's modify the star speed. So there's this really handy console window down here. And what's really cool if is if you start typing night mode, you'll start to see those values appear here. So night mode dot config. Okay, we're just following the code up here, night mode dot config. And then you can do, use the dot syntax again, dot star speed underscore speed. The current value, if I hit enter right now is 0 0.03. But if I wanna change that value, I can use my up arrow key or type it again and do space equals some number. So let's do 10 and hit enter. And we'll go back to the game and see if that changes the speed of the stars. So we'll have to play the game again. And they're moving much faster. That's really cool. Let's make them move even faster than that. Let's make them move at uh, 60. So they're f flying by. Um, that's, that's awesome, right? We just modified the game based on a single variable in the game's logic, the game's code. And we can do this to, to our advantage, right? This is just something in the background that doesn't really affect the game itself. We can start doing some hacks and cheats. So let's do that next. Um, same thing, let's find the config for this guy right here, the T-Rex. 
So this is all his options. So we have drop velocity, flash off, flash on. I'm not 100% sure what each one is. You can play around with them, but let's look at that in the console window down here. So we have trex.config, and these are all the values. So we have, um, let's play with gravity. Currently, we can see that the current value for gravity is 0 0.06. So if we make that larger or smaller, he's either gonna jump higher or jump lower. So let's start with making it a bigger number. Let's see what that does. So let's go to, let's do like 2.5. T-Rex config.gravity is 2.5. So let's come back over here to the game and play that. And he, he can barely jump now. He's not gonna get over, he barely got over the hurdle and then he looks like he hit it on the downside. So a larger number for gravity is um, gonna make him heavier, way more, have more mass, I guess. So let's make that a smaller number then. So the original was 0 0.03. No, the original was 0 0.06. Let, let's do 0 0.0. Point, the original was 0.6. Let's do 0.3. And that should make him jump higher. Oh, and it certainly does. He's almost off the top of the screen there for some of his jumps. Um, and, you know, you can go as extreme as you want with this. Let's, let's actually do 0 0.03. Like that's... Uh, 10 times higher, he'll be able to jump pretty much. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna jump, and he is up. He's still going, 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 going. He jumped over three, four, five, six, seven, seven hurdles. So you would imagine uh, you can make this a very, very small number and essentially jump once. He can fly through the entire game, and at some point, who knows how long that'll be, but at some point he would come down, and then you'd have to jump again. So that's one way that you can can hack this game uh, directly and kind of cheat to to get a high score. Something else, let's let's put him back to uh, a reasonable jump. Let's point, do 0 0.03 because that's something that I can actually control. Um, something else that we can do is when that happens, what you just saw on the screen, when he runs into an obstacle, there's some logic in this game that says game's over. Like you lost, you're done, you have to restart. So what we can do and what I've already done is search through this code to find that logic. And uh, this happens right here. It's this dot game over. Okay. And pretty much if there is not a collision, then all of this code right here is going to happen, meaning the game's still going on. But if there is a collision, then we're going to call the game over function. So let's see where that definition of that function is. Game over. Uh, is right here on line 1161. And I mean, th these lines numbers might change over time. They might be different for you. But for me, it's on line 1161. So what happens when the game's over? This uh, a sound effects played, the hit sound, the boom boom sound. Uh, if you're on a phone, I'm assuming your phone would vibrate like a mobile device. And then a whole bunch of other stuff um, that happens. So how can we use this to our advantage? Well, there's a couple ways, but the one way that I found that was uh, pretty cool was that um, we can pretty much write our own game over logic, which could be anything, but I think the most simplest thing would be to write game over game over logic that overrides this and does nothing, right? So right now, this is what it does. Let's make the game over logic do nothing. And unfortunately, we can't edit this code right now, but because this function, this game over function is defined within an object as well. Let me show you how that works. So runner.prototype, this bracket encompasses the game over logic. So down here we can see that if we type in runner.prototype.game over, that's our function right there, runner.prototype.game over. So let's save the original definition of the game over logic into a variable, and we can do that with var original equals. So I'm j you can call this whatever, this is a variable. We can call it old or var Tony teaches tech. You can name that whatever you want, but we're just gonna associate that with the current logic for game over, which we just looked at online. What was it, 1161? Or, or yeah, yeah, 1161, which I just passed. 1161. All right, uh, let's just search for it. There it is. Nope, that's the game over there. 1161. All right, so let's save that variable. 
and let's write our own definition of what the game over logic should be. So let's say runner dot prototype dot game over equals, and this time it's going to be uh, a function that does nothing. And that's what that means. This, this is the function. This we're defining a function with no arguments and no logic whatsoever. So let's make that the current game logic and let's play the game. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to jump and I'm going to jump over the first hurdle and then hit the next one. And he's just going right through it because our game over logic allows that pretty much this, this code is executing this code right here is executing. And because he's colliding, nothing's happening. So that is how you can pretty much make him invincible. Uh, what if we wanted to purposely end the game? We could do that by pretty much assigning the game over logic to the original function definition. So I'm hoping this makes sense. So basically we're going back to the original definition right here for game over. And when I execute that, and when this guy hits this hurdle, we're gonna see the normal behavior of the game where the game stops, just like that. So that is how you can make the dinosaur invincible. Now, that's cool. We can, we can have him run through, right? We can have him run through the entire level like that, um, but that would take a long time, right? So even though he's invincible, you would still have to sit here and wait you know, a very long time to get the max score we can make him run faster. We probably already know that by now. So the config um, for the runner, let's find that, is on line 141. And one of his, one of these uh, elements in here is speed. So the, the default speed is six. Let's change that value. Let's change that value to something else. So runner, dot config dot speed right current value six let's make it 100 see if that spe speeds things up doesn't seem to be doing too much let's make it an even larger value let's do 5000 and i'm not sure actually why that doesn't uh change his speed maybe we have to re let's let's have him lose and then come back into the game uh and then see if that takes effect so we lost on purpose oh yeah there we go now he's running much faster and he's actually he's running so fast that you cannot see any of the game elements so they're they're there but they're just flying by so quickly that you can't see them so maybe we'll go back to the uh 100 speed and we'll have him lose on purpose which I think that's going to take, I think the, fa the, 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 what I'm thinking happening is these elements are coming by so fast that the pixels are never actually intercepting, inter interacting with each other. So that's why he's not actually hitting anything. Um, let's, let's refresh this. So we should be back to the original game logic. None of that, none of that actually sticks between sessions. Um, but we will put his speed to a hundred just so you can see what that looks like and reset there you go so that's that's what it looks like more uh more not as fast like 100 versus 5000 okay so cool stuff so we can have him run fast jump high we can combine all of these and make him pretty much invincible um but for the extremely lazy people out there who just care about what the high score is for themselves uh, you could just set that high score to a number, right? You don't even have to play the game. We can access this variable and literally not even play the game and get the high score. So let me show you how you can do that. After some digging around, I figured out that you can go to runner dot, and let's, I'm not sure if you have to be in the game or, or not, but let's just try it. So runner dot instance, uh, underscore, it's, it's a weird one dot save high score and and this is a uh, this is code which i can show you uh save high score um, and i should probably show you so let's let's make sure we get that code back up so we're gonna 
refresh the page. Bear with me for a second. So we're going to come over to sources, pause the game, come back here, and that's going to pull up the code. And let me just show you. So the save high score, high score. Uh, this is the definition of save high score. So you need to give it the distance ran and uh, a variable, pretty much a Boolean saying whether or not to reset the high score. So runner.instance.save high score. If we wanted to write the high score, uh, I don't know how many numbers it is. It's nine, 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 nine. So what is that? That's like a, one less than a million. Um, and then save high score. Uh, I forget if it's either a zero or a one here, but let's see what that does. We're gonna execute that function and go back to the debugger. And what that does, you see it did change the high score, but something that I figured out was that there is not a one-to-one -one relationship between the number that you give save high score and what shows up on the screen. So it looks like it's about a quarter of that. So if we would do 999999 divided by 25,000, uh, there's, there's a factor of 40 difference. So basically, if, if we multiply um, 999999 times 40, that's the value that we need to give the high score function in order to get the actual max high score. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if we go to save high score and give it this value right here, this should give us a high score of, you know, 999999. And, and it does. So, oh, this is cool. This is actually a uh, underwater you don't want to hit the inner tubes. I, I haven't seen that one yet. But yeah, we got the high score now. 99999. That's it. So um, if you go any anything above that, like if we go, if you change this from 60 to 99 at the end, it's going to reset, spill back over to zero. You can't go above, you can't go above this number. This, this, this is how you get the actual high number. And that is pretty much uh, one, two, three, four, five nines. And I forget, does this save between sessions? If we refresh this and play the game again, it does not. But I think if we change that variable from zero to a one and refresh the session, then that should save the high score. It does not. Uh, how did I save that high score? I think this is pretty much the same logic. Maybe I have to actually finish the game and then refresh. Yeah, there we go. So you have to uh, set the high score, lose the game, and then refresh the page. And this will be your new permanent high score from that point forward. Guys, I hope you learned a thing or two about the uh, not only coding, if you're not familiar, but um, how to, I don't know, maybe reverse engineer stuff like this to your advantage. Uh, this is just a simple, fun game. Nothing, nothing ethically wrong with it. this. This is just fun, fun things to do, uh, explore how things work, at least in my opinion. So um, let me know if you like this video in the comments below. Let me know if you find out some cool other hacks. You, feel free to paste code in the descriptions. I would love to try it out and see what you guys can come up with. Uh, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I will see you in the next one.